London about 40 years ago. And another peep as it is today. The appearance of the road has changed somewhat, hasn't it? The story of our roads makes an interesting study. Thousands of years ago, our great highways simply grew from the foot tracks of primitive man. As he or she journeyed from hut to stream for water, the first roads were born. War is a great road maker. An example is the new Burma road built to give aid to China by way of Tibet. The Romans were busy road makers and every motorist will be familiar with our own Watling Street. But the greatest Roman effort was the Appian Way, built of slabs of hard stone very carefully laid. Begun in 312 BC by Appius Claudius, the road first ran from Rome to Capua and on to Taranto and Brindisi, 340 miles away. It was called the Queen of Roads. The war has brought the Appian Way into the news. It was on February the 13th, 1944, in the Anzio beachhead, that our forces retired from Campanlione to Carocheto. The line was held from Carocheto to Cisterna on the Appian Way. But the most ambitious road project of all was conceived by a Briton, the late Sir Stenson Cook, first secretary of the Automobile Association. Yes, it was the scheme to link London with Istanbul and Europe with Asia. A start was made on the road in 1933, and the governments of the various countries through which it passed cooperated in extending it. Mile upon mile of good motor roads stretched right across the continent of Europe. The Great International Highway is 2,000 miles long and costs 17 million pounds. And what are the roads of the future? Among the possibilities are roads that glow at night with neon tubes. And our cartoonist Joe Noble suggests roads that move. Of course, there might be complications. Wheels won't be necessary on a moving road, and as roads are good landmarks from the air, they may be disguised to harmonize with their surroundings. It's strange to think, isn't it, that our modern roads started from the simple foot tracks of someone looking for water. But so it is. New